Travis with Diesel Laptops here. Today we're going to be looking at a JCB telehandler. This is a JCB engine. We're going to do a general walkthrough and then we want to talk about where to actually find the maintenance reset in here. We've had a couple questions on that here lately. So we're just going to go through our forklift and telehandler category. Choose JCB, telehandler 500 series, and this is an Ecomax. All right, from here you can do a system scan or you can directly connect. We're just going to directly connect here today, so we'll click our start button, follow that up by confirm, and we're going to get this message here. This is really important, guys. So what you've got is your 9-pin connector there. Behind that fuse box you have a set of plugs with the CAN bus lines on them that need to be swapped depending on whether you're trying to diagnose the vehicle side or the powertrain. So do keep that in mind. If you're using this tool, you can't communicate with one side or the other. It's probably because that needs to be swapped around there. Okay, everything's already hooked up, so we're going to get ourselves connected. Hit confirm here. And the first screen we come to are fault codes. Now these are all inactive, but we can double click these. We'll get our P code, and we can plug that into Diesel Laptop's DTC solutions off highway. Diesel Laptop's icon is built directly into that text software, so we can click it. That opens our dashboard launcher. Come over here to the left-hand column, choose DACB engine, find our Ecomax, and we get all of our codes associated with this engine. Now, we can scroll down if we want to, or we can actually come over here to the search bar on the left. Now that we narrowed everything down, type in our P code. So there's a 341, click it, and read through that information, get ourselves pointed in the right direction so we can fix that fault. In our live data tab, we're going to get into live data associated with the engine. So we got 28 different uh, parameters here, and this is you know going to be separate from that after treatment system, which we'll look at here in a minute. And they just populate as you go down. And you've got some other features built into that, you know, some dashboards and things like that. Uh, that basically just give you a pictorial view, but it's the exact same data you were looking at there in that live data tab. Okay. We'll hit our back button, jump over to ECU information. This is going to be read-only data. It tells you what you're connected to, lets you know what the current injector codes are, and then our activations. This is where you really get into the good stuff. This is going to be any sort of test you can run. All right. And our settings tab, lastly, which is going to be any sorts of calibrations, codings, any sorts of resets you have to do. We'll disconnect from that. And we'll look at the after treatment module next. So once you disconnect, it just brings you back out to the main screen. Click start here. Again, we're going to get prompted for that message about swapping those connectors if you have to. Ignition's on. Same thing here, you're going to have your live data on the left hand side. You can scroll through, and that'll take it a few seconds here to populate as you work your way through it. Um, but up top, you're going to notice now you have live data faults, ECU, and activations. False tab, ECU, activations. Okay, so this is going to be all of your tests associated with that here. You see all your different dev tests. Really good coverage out of an aftermarket tool here. Okay, we'll disconnect from that. And we want to get in here and talk about these maintenance resets. So this is actually going to be located under hydraulic management. You're going to want to click start here. Again, swap your connectors if need be. Hit our connect button. Again, the only difference here is you're just going to be looking at live data from the hydraulic system. Everything else operates the same way. Once you get over here to the settings tab, service hour reset. Okay, so you want to click start here. It does give you a few different options there depending on how many hours you want to stretch that out. All you do at this point is hit confirm and choose the amount of hours you want to set it to. I'm just going to do 100 for video, command executed, and you're finished. It's just that simple. And you can do boom angle calibrations and things like that too. So overall, really good coverage. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.